Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. In this video, we're talking about the Nord Stage 3 Synthesizer Training, also known as the Nord Stage 3 Synth Tutorial. This is part five. Here, we're going to talk about Mono Legato, Portamento, some of you might know that as, uh, the Glide area. All of this is housed under the Nord Stage 3 voice section over here on the synth engine. So that's what we're going to talk about for the majority of this video. We might actually do an example or two as well. The, somewhere in the middle or at the end we're going to talk about fast attack because this is one little aspect of the Nord Stage 3 that I didn't get on any other video thus far and I think I need to talk about that briefly. All right this is part five. If you've missed part one uh, go back all the way to the beginning and watch from the beginning if you're interested in learning about the Nord Stage 3 synthesizer in great detail. You can do that by going to part one and then following the instructions there and just moving your way and working your way through the synth so that you learn it. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. Currently, the channel is focused on Nord products, Nord Stage 3 in particular. All right, so with that said, let's dig into Part 5. Now, if you look at the voice section under the Nord Stage 3, you'll read that it says it, the Nord Stage 3 synthesizer has a number of different voice modes selectable in the voice section. There are three options for monophonic, polyphonic playing, as well as different unison modes. Now, unison is talked about here, but I won't be talking about it in this particular video. If you want to learn more about unison, you can go to part two, I think, where I talk about unison as its uh, relationship with the oscillators. Mono and legato voice modes. In both mono and legato mode, only one note is played at a time. So the moment you click this button here and have either of these options invoked, uh, it's one note at a time. That's the whole idea of a monophonic synthesizer. And just a brief history lesson here, in the old days when synths were first created, the electronics weren't sophisticated enough to provide uh, options for more than one note at a time. So a player could only play one note at a time. That's just the way it was. So nowadays, uh, we want to imitate that ability to play only one note at a time, and that's what this option allows you to do. Even though there's great emphasis as well these days to play polyphonic synthesizers, and there's great emphasis on, hey, the more notes you can play at the same time, the more polyphony it has, the better it is. While at the same time, you want the option to play one note at a time so that you can imitate the sounds of yesteryear. And even today, um, playing monophonic in monophonic mode is a very cool way to uh, approach either a solo or a really distinct melody part. All right, so in both of those modes, only one key is played at a time. So that's what they have in common. Besides that, there's uh, some subtleties here that you need to read about. Uh, right, the main difference between the two modes is how the modulation and amplifier envelopes act when playing legato. That's these envelopes here. They act differently if you play legato. They're talking about with overlapping key presses. So uh, in the simplest terms, if I were to hold a C key and play a G key while holding the C key, I'm technically playing in legato mode, or at least in legato mode in the eyes of the Nord Stage 3. So when you play like that, the actual, uh, the way that this rolls out is totally different. In mono mode, that's this mode here, in mono mode, both envelopes restart from the point in the attack phase where the level is equal to the previous note. If the decay or release phase has been entered. So what that means is, well, you'll see it here firsthand when we play with it, but it, what it means is as I play legato in a legato style while being in mono mode, my envelope will reset on every key. So it's going to be pronounced each and every time. Whereas if I play legato in legato mode, the envelope won't be reset. In other words, I'll run through the attack phase, it will decay down to a certain level, and at that point, every note I introduce won't reset those attack uh, envelopes. It won't reset the envelopes at all. It'll just continue to play as if I didn't, um, as if I was playing in a sustain type mode. You'll see what I mean in a second. I want to keep reading on here because I want to go through all the definitions and then we'll go through each one and, and describe them. 
All right, so in legato mode, the envelopes do not move to the attack phase once the decay point has been reached, as long as one is playing legato. Uh, an exception to the behavior in mono mode is that the modulation envelope is always reset to its start position when the release time is set to infinity. The release time here they're talking about is over here. Under the modulation envelope, the release time set to infinity, which is 10. Another difference is that in legato mode, glide, that idea of glide, the idea of moving from one note to another, is only active when you play legato. A new key needs to be pressed before the previous key is released to get the glide effect. All right, so let's take each one of these first. I'm going to actually start in reverse order here because this bottom one here, the idea that legato mode is different than mono mode, uh, when you're playing in legato mode, there's no glide unless you're playing in a legato style. Okay, let's first set up our synth. I'm going to Reset this to synthesizer and set all the parameters to zero. I'm going to make it go to the super wave and I'd like to sit on square two. So a super wave square two is what I'm playing with. Uh, put your attacks down to zero. Put your decays up to five on this decay for the modulation envelope. And for the amp envelope, let's put the sustain all the way up. Put your release to a two on both envelopes. Put your filter frequency to a five. Put your velocity and modulation envelope knob to zero so that there's no effect on this first go around. All right, resonance down to zero. Everything else should be fine. So let's play uh, in polyphonic mode. Okay. So you can hear uh, three distinct notes here in my C chord, and you can hear the whole, all three notes individually. When I push the mono button, I only will hear one note at a time. Even though I'm playing two keys, it'll only play one note at a time, and it'll always play the last note played. So I'll introduce an E, and you can hear it's only playing one note at a time. If I play in a staccato manner, it's as if I'm playing one note at a time, whether I'm in polyphonic mode or mono mode. It's only when I start playing two keys at the same time where you really realize that you can only play one note at a time. Okay, so that's the whole idea of a monophonic synthesizer. Now, you'll notice that if I move my glide up to a 3 or a 4, you're going to hear a glide effect as I go from note to note, whether I play staccato or legato. So let's play staccato first. That's where I'm holding the key and letting go before I hit the next key. So each key is played in uniquely by itself, like this. Even if I play legato while holding one note and playing the other. So here's my C. I'm going to introduce G. Still hear the glide. To C, still hear the glide. I'm holding the C key the whole time. All right. So that's mono mode. Now watch the difference when I play legato mode. I'm going to play staccato style in legato mode. And watch. You won't hear the glide. You might think it's broken. Hey, where's my glide? It's only because... I'm holding, uh, I'm not holding the notes in one into the other. Now let's hold the C key and go to a G and you'll hear the glide being introduced. Here we go. There's the glide. So that's the first major difference between mono and legato. When you play legato, you get the glide. In either case, when you play staccato type style while in legato mode, you won't hear the glide. No glide at all. Until I hold one note like this G I'm holding. Well, going down to the C. All right, that's the first difference. Let's talk about the second difference here. In mono mode, my filter resets each time. So in order to see or and see what that's like, I have to actually turn on the filter uh, modulation envelope here. So let's go ahead and turn this knob to a 10. And we'll turn this attack to a 5. Keep this decay to a 5. So 5, 5. Make sure your frequency is at 50%. And you can turn this attack on to maybe a 3. Keep everything else the same. So as I play the notes, you'll hear the filter open up through the attack phase. As the decay kicks in, you'll hear the filter back down until it reaches a, a 5 level here on this filter cutoff. And you'll note that when I play in legato mode, or no matter how I play, the envelope will be reset each time. In other words, it will have to go through its attack phase, through its decay, and it will proceed accordingly as I add each note. You'll also hear as I move through the attack phase that each note I play, it resumes the volume and the level at which the previous note was played. Let me explain. So let's just go up and I'll play staccato type mode while in mono mode with the modulation filter uh, having some effect. So you can hear that 
you hear the, the frequencies come in and then back down. Let me play to the G. Okay. And they settle in. Now let me play that same line in legato mode while holding the C the whole time. Here's my C. The filter. Now it's settled down. I introduce a new note. And I still hear the filter. In other words, that envelope kicks in each time every note I play. Now let's play that exact same thing in legato mode while playing in legato style, and you'll hear that the envelope does go through the attack phase, goes through the decay phase, but stays at the level uh, where it doesn't reintroduce the envelope. Listen in. Here's my C. I'm going to hold the G. Now it's settled down. As I add the G and the C, I'm not hearing that raspiness because the envelope hasn't reset itself until I play staccato mode, where I let go of the note, and there's my filter again, there's my envelope kicking in. So legato mode, in a sense, is a little more subtle. If I play legato style in legato mode, I won't get that filter introduced, and I can have more of a subdued tone in terms of, at least as far as the filter frequency goes. Now remember, this modulation envelope can modulate more than just the filter frequency cutoff. It can also modulate the oscillator control if I introduce a second oscillator. And if you want to learn all about, the, if this is all sounding confusing to you, go to part four and you'll see what I'm talking about in terms of this modulation envelope. But better yet, go to part one if you're brand new. All right, so that's really essentially it. Let's just do a quick review. Mono mode is glide every time, new filter every time. So if you if you want a guaranteed um, monophonic synthesizer with glide each time and a abrupt filter each time, meaning the modulation envelope kicks in on every note, no matter how you play, then just put it in mono mode, and you're going to get that each and every time. If you want some different uh, options here, you can put it in legato mode, and as your attack phase settles in, it will stay down and won't reintroduce a new modulation envelope, which is kind of neat. Uh, also, with legato mode, you have the option of not necessarily having it glide until you hold those notes, and then you can make it glide when you want. So, a lot of different options there. And then this final uh, thing that they talk about, an exception to the behavior in mono mode is that the modulation envelope is always reset to its start position when the release time is set to infinity. The release time they're talking about here is this knob. This is the modulation envelope release time, and by putting it to a 10, they mean infinity. In fact, if you look closely at this, you'll see that it says infinity there. Uh, do they all say infinity? No, see, they don't all say infinity. This one says infinity. This envelope release goes to 45 seconds, so interesting. So with infinity set, what that means is the envelope is always reset to its start position when the release time. Okay, so let's see, uh, to its start position. So if I play legato, in mono mode. Now if I put a longer attack here, what happens? Looks like the envelope is always reset each time. Now if I take that release off, what happens? the release back on. Yeah, you can hear a little bit of a difference there. So you can play around with that and see what that does for you. And then when neither of these are pressed, you're in polyphonic mode. Okay, let's quickly talk about the fast attack because I want to talk about what that is. Uh, first of all, it only affects certain samples, so you won't get this button to illuminate if you're on a regular classic oscillator, for example. You'll only get it to illuminate if you're on a sample, and only certain samples at that. So here I have my brass section pop 3. Now if I add the fast attack... That's with the fast attack. This is without it. Seems like there's a little bit more of a roundness when you have the fast attack off. Let's read about that. With fast attack turned on, sample playback will begin at a fixed alternate starting point, bypassing the original attack position of the sample. 
As an example, this can be used to remove the buildup phase of a slow string sound. Well, let's find a slow string sound sample here, and we'll see if we can get... Well, this is orchestra strings legato, high vibrato. Let's try that with and without the fast attack. It's without it. And now with it. Sound very similar. Let me take the attack off altogether on my main envelope there. Yeah, it is a little more punchy with the fast attack. I found that if you put it on a sample like a solo violin, you can really hear it. There's the solo violin. Let me put a little attack on here. And then with the fast attack, it's really a different personality trait. I also find that if you're going to use the arpeggiator, it helps to put that fast attack on there because the notes become a little bit more distinct on the pulses of the arpeggiator. So you get a totally different effect when you use the fast attack with the arpeggiator. Uh, please know that some samples uh, don't allow fast attack. As you move through these samples, well, here's number one, 45, sample 45, pizzicato one. Um, no matter what you do, you can't turn on the fast attack. And that's probably likely due to the fact that that particular sample is already a fast attack. So maybe there's just no option to go any faster at this point. Maybe the, it's set to a fast attack already inherently as the sample itself was programmed. So just know that uh, some of those samples do uh, not allow for the fast attack option to be, to be had. Okay, let's finalize this video and go back to the legato mono option as a monophonic synthesizer and i'd like to play you an excerpt from genesis uh the album is three sides live the song is called in the cage we're somewhere in the middle and uh that song is interesting it sets up to be pretty um a lot going on with that particular song but i thought we would take it as an example since i knew this video was going to be fairly short um i wanted to go and uh give you an example of uh of what it sounds like with the monophonic synthesizer in uh, in those modes. So I've got a sound here pre-programmed. Okay, and I want to break this down for you and then I'll play along with the album. So I'm using panel A and B. And on panel A, I have in my left hand, on the left split, I have an organ. And on that organ, I have a phase going on. Let me turn the phase off. So it's basically a B3 with some options. And most important, though, is this phase aspect. And you'll see why that's important when you hear the piece that I'm about to play. And in the right hand, I have the amazing solo part here. All right. And I'm using legato mode. I am using unison one, uh, a super wave, and maybe some other settings. Now on panel B, I've got just the synth on. I've got the boys choir Mellotron, and it sounds like this by itself. So together, the organ and the boys choir sound like this. And now you're starting to hear something that sounds awfully like Genesis. All right, let's play along. 